There are a few things creepier than the thought of a dip in the dark, murky ocean with a great white shark circling below. While it's not something we think about much in Maine, it would appear more of these ferocious sharks are swimming north. Dr. James Sulikowski is a marine biologist and a professor at the University of New England. He's been researching many species of shark from the southern tip of the U.S. to just off the coast of Maine, even being followed by Discovery Channel's cameras, of course, for Shark Week. That means you've made it. Yes. We spoke with him about the trend and what he's learning about all these species. So all of the research that we've been collecting speaks to that, and absolutely. We're seeing more and more. Every year, too, we're seeing more and more sightings. So we've had some receivers like that one sitting off the coast of Kennebunkport in an unrelated study that detected a white shark. And then we strategically placed some, you know, off of some seal haulouts. And now we're getting them, you know, year after year, um, you know, several sharks at a time, and they're showing up earlier. So it's all pointing towards that. Any idea why that is? Well, we think a lot of it is uh, food sources. Uh, you know, the Cape has a big seal population, and there's a lot of white sharks down there. And you get to a point where there's only so much food and so much competition uh, before you get um, sort of situations with the white sharks not being able to you know, feed properly and whatnot. So basically, they're searching for new areas with less competition, um, more of a food source, and we have a lot of seals up here. And it looks like um, we've got everything that those white sharks want. Does the water temperature come into play at any point with this? Because I think most of us think sharks are in warmer waters yeah. and not in the cold waters off Maine, but that right. is not necessarily the case. So Maine is unique in that we have uh, shark, spe shark species that have um, their homeothermic, so they can control their body temperatures. And so they can kind of, they're a lot like tuna, they can kind of move anywhere that they want mm -hmm. and not be really affected by the water temperature. So, um, good for them, but they're not good, so for, good them. for us. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> so that's not a big, big deal. And okay. So there are white sharks in off Canada, Nova Scotia, uh, right now. Um, so yeah, that's not not an issue for them. So you brought a number of things that are just fascinating that we want to talk about and how you some of the tools that you use in actually detecting these sharks. Right. Yeah. And the more technology you have, the more you can understand sort of a species. And we're right now really trying to figure out why they're here, how mm -hmm. many are here. Um, you know, if they're spending here to eat, reproduce, um, is our environment, you know, something that they need in order to survive. And it's an exciting time right now uh, to be in Maine. <laughs> if you like sharks. That, <laughs> that said, you know, yeah. shark attacks on humans are pretty rare. They are. Why is that? Uh, for one, uh, we don't really look like what they eat. Um, and we're not uh, really made of a lot of stuff that they like to eat. So like white sharks go for um, fat and blubber. There's a lot, of, a lot of energy in that. And so that's why they focus on seals, dead whales, and things of that nature. And uh, we really don't fit that mode. Um, and you know, globally, there's probably only about 100 or so shark attacks that occur, and that's global, you know, right. around the whole world. And you think about um, here in Maine, I mean, if you really want to dig into it, there's probably been only one, uh, you know, um, unprovoked attack, and that's really, you know, needs to be investigated a little bit more. So we're pretty safe. Well, that's good news. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Although yeah. these teeth are, uh, they, they leave look something to be decided. They? Yeah. So sharks, are, are they born with all of their teeth? They are, yeah. And, and so these just flip around? They do. It's like a conveyor belt. And what's really cool is, uh, you know, every month or so, they'll get a whole new row of teeth. They constantly keep falling out, you know, over and over and over again. So they make some great predators because they have always this nice, sharp set. And this is what kind of shark that we're looking this at? This one's right a now? mako, and okay. it's uh, you know one that we have off our coast. Um, we we see quite often. Whew, we yeah. don't want to run into that no. one too often. No, no, no. But you know they they tend to eat fish. They're really quick movers, um, so we don't really have anything to worry so about. So let's talk a little bit about some of these uh, some of the equipment that you use to actually follow these sharks and figure out what they're doing and how they're. Yeah, behaving. it's uh, the te technology is great, um, and we collaborate a lot with Atlantic White Shark Conservancy and uh, Dr. Greg Scomo off the Cape. So all of this work really stems from, you know, all the hard work they put into their studies. And luckily, you know, our white sharks are coming up here. So that is a uh, it's an acoustic receiver. And you can imagine that. So there we go. Yeah, yeah, you can pick it up. It's okay. And this <laughs> yeah. transmits 
with this, this one or that one? Talks to this one okay. right here. Oops. And basically, what happens is that you, um, you know this has a unique code, uh, and a, a, that unique code identifies that shark. So and the, this is attached. To that's the shark. attached. Okay. Yeah. And see, this it's is a little insane. dart, and the swim, shark swims by, and they kind of jab it in. It's like going to the dentist. Um, <laughs> you know, stings for a little bit, but then it's over. <laughs> And this is a little bit bigger, though, to go into that the is, This is something you yes. guys developed. We are developing this tag right here. We call it the birth tag. And we're hoping to combine some of this technology and to be able to find out exactly where white sharks give birth and other species that are around here. Because that's kind of like our holy grail. We don't know when that happens. And people would ask, well, why do we need to know that? But a lot of our sharks um, need protection and areas need protection of where they might spend this critical time in their lives. And this gives us this opportunity to protect that area. And I think also, you know how important commercial fishing is in our area. Um, and it allows us to sort of allow the fishermen to fish, sharks and other you know, marine organisms to do what they do um, so we all can kind of coexist. This might be a loaded question, sorry, but uh, yeah. what is the most fascinating research you've discovered over the last few years? Oh. Wow, that's a, that's a tough one. Uh, <laughs> there's so many really cool things right now. and A lot of it stems from here in Maine, we don't really know much about sharks. So it's kind of a, a wide open, you know, kid in a candy store, always finding something new and exciting. Um, and with here, you know, right now, it's the, the white sharks that are really showing up in these great numbers, you know, in certain areas that repeated, you know, year after year after year and now earlier uh, is really exciting, you know, for us because, you know, it's an apex predator. Uh, it's a shark that's really important to our ecosystem uh, and helps maintain balance. And I think that's something that we all kind of need to think about. Uh, but, you know, we studied the poor regal shark, which is my personal favorite, which is the phantom. We, we know really nothing about that species, and we're trying to learn more and more and more. And working with the National Marine Fishery Service and um, colleagues uh, down there, one of my close friends, Lisa Natanson, we're really opening and finding new information about them that um, is kind of, to us, uh, exciting and kind of mind-blowing. I think the most interesting thing he said to us was the fact that sharks don't really care about water temperature, they just go where there's food. Because I feel like that's a myth we've all thought about. Unlike you and me, we go where there's food, but we do care about the uh, temperature. <laughs> of the water, yes yeah. we do. <laughs> Stay with us, we'll be right back.